P3 will be synthesized approximately six to seven percent. So this is what we discussed in the uh, yesterday class. Then apart from that, <clears throat> so once the T2, T3, T3 and T4 is formed, that will move out of the lumen into the uh, follicular cell, sorry, thyrocyte uh, by the process called endocytosis. And then we, we require T3, T4, we don't require MIT and DIT. So proteolytic enzymes, exactly, it will cut the T3, T4 by the usage of proteolytic enzyme, which is present in the uh, thyrocyte. They remove the MI, they cut the T3, T4 separately. Of course, the follicular cells contain T3, T4, MIT, and DIT, but only T3 and T4 are allowed into the blood circulation. MIT and DIT are not permeable into the blood circulation. Then, apart from that, we discussed yesterday that three different types of proteins are there. It, it, which will carry the T3, T4, uh, thyroxine binding globulin, TBG, and the T thyroxine binding pre-albumin, that is TBPA, and thyroxine binding albumin, that is a TBA. So maximum is thyroxine binding globulin, that is 75%, and then 15 to 12% is TBPA, and 12 to 15% is TBA. And what you have to understand is 99% of the T3, T4, they are in bound form. They bound to the protein and only 1% is unbound form. And already we discussed that this unbound form, that is the free form of T3, T4, it will produce the action on the uh, different parts of the body. So this is what we discussed. Then next concept is, uh, we also discussed that T4 is less active when compared to T3 on the cells. So it is mandatory that T4 should get converted into T3. For that, you require an enzyme called as 5' prime monodehydrinase. So that will uh, remove the iodine from the T4 at the fifth position of first benzene ring to give uh, T3. So whereas if another enzyme is there, 5 mono iodinase, this enzyme, it can also remove the iodine, but not from the first benzene ring. It will remove the iodine from the second benzene ring, the third one. So that's why you will get, what is that, uh, inactivated, uh, what is that, T3. So 5 prime mono deiodinase, it will give active T3. This is what we discussed yesterday. So today we are going to concentrate only one slide. This is the slide we are concentrating. Uh, this concept is little complicated to understand, not, not complicated, complicated in sense. So it is linked, one point is linked to another point. Listen carefully, try to understand the concept. Then it becomes very easy for you to present the answer in the final exam. Carefully observe the slide here. I have written that synthesis of enzymes concerned with the metabolism. That means these are the functions of T3 and T4. First one is it will promote the synthesis of enzymes concerned with the metabolism. You already studied the metabolism in biochemistry, like uh, carbohydrate metabolism, protein metabolism, and lipid metabolism. All the enzymes which are concerned with the metabolism, so they will be synthesized by the, that means their synthesis is promoted by the T3, T4. And second, we will discuss this one in detail. And second function is it promotes the growth, both physical and as well as mental growth is promoted by the thyroid hormone, not just the physical, remember this point. And third one, it promotes the receptors for LDL in liver. That means LDL will be present, low density lipoproteins will be present in the blood circulation. And what this T3, T4 will do, it will promote or it will promote the synthesis of receptors in the liver for LDL. So once the receptor content in the liver increases for LDL, then automatically the LDL will start to move from the blood circulation into liver and then it will bind to the receptor. Thereby it will undergo the metabolism or breakdown. So this is the one method by which the LDL can be metabolized. The next one is the transportation of proteins, promotes the transportation of the proteins. Uh, this is one of the most important point, important functions of the T3, T4. Observe carefully, it promotes the transport of pro transport proteins. That means any protein which transfers the material from one side of the membrane to another side of the membrane. So those proteins are synthesized. That means their synthesis is promoted by the thyroid hormone. I repeat again, any protein which promotes the movement of the molecules from one side of the membrane to another side of the membrane. So those proteins are called as transport proteins and or carrier proteins. And example is, the most important transport protein which will be which uh, their synthesis is promoted by the t3 t4 is sodium potassium atpase observe carefully sodium potassium atpase what it will do sodium potassium atpase is an enzyme which promotes the movement of sodium 
from inside the cell to outside the cell and promotes the movement of potassium from the outside the cell to inside the cell. I repeat again. So sodium potassium ATPase will promote the movement of sodium from inside the cell to outside the cell and it promotes the movement of potassium from outside the cell to inside the cell. For every three sodiums which are coming out of the cell, two potassiums will go inside the cell. Repeat again. So three, potash three sodiums will come out of the cell and two potassiums will go inside the cell. So this is the role of sodium potassium ATPase. But here one issue is there. If it wants to promote the movement of sodium and potassium, it requires a lot of amount of ATP. You observe that here the ATP have written. It requires good amount of, really rich amount of ATP is required. This is one issue. So this issue should be sorted out. Then if you want ATP, then you just think about the biochemistry what you studied. In biochemistry, you studied that you are consuming the glucose. Glucose will enter into the blood circulation. And once it enters into the blood circulation, it will go to the cell and it will enter into the cytosol. In the cytosol, the, gly gl sorry, the glucose will get converted into pyruvate that you have studied in glycolysis. Then pyruvate, it will get converted into acetyl-CoA and that acetyl-CoA will enter inside the mitochondria and it will run through one cycle called a citric acid cycle. I think you understood that one. So that means you require glucose to for the production of ATP because glucose should get converted into acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA should enter inside the mitochondria and mitochondria will run through the cycle. That means the acetyl-CoA will run through the cycle and called citric acid cycle. The, that means you require, that means finally you will get ATP. 32 to 36 ATPs you will get. If you want ATP, that means glucose should get converted into acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA should be ready. So here you can see that acetyl-CoA is there. Just if it is glucose in the form of acetyl-CoA, if it is available, it is of no use. You require oxygen. Good amount of oxygen is required. And apart from that, you require water. So oxygen and glucose in the form of which one? Acetyl-CoA and as well as water. So all three are required for the production of which one? ATP. I think you understand. These three are linked to for the production of ATP. And you have to understand that if you oxygen, glucose in the form of acetyl-CoA and water, all these three will be present inside the mitochondria and it will run through one cycle. That means basically this process of production of energy is taking place inside the mitochondria. Fine. Then continuously more amount of sodium potassium ATP cell form, it demands more ATP. That means your mitochondria is unable to handle that much amount of, that much demand cannot be handled by the mitochondria. When demand becomes more, supply becomes less, then what happens? Mitochondria, slowly it starts to enlarge. The size of the mitochondria will increase to meet the demand because it requires to produce more amount of ATP. That's why it starts to enlarge. Further, the demand becomes more. So once the demand is increasing like anything, then automatically, instead of the mitochondria undergoes division and more number of, instead of one mitochondria, two or three mitochondria will start to develop. That means initially to cope up the demand, the size of the mitochondria will increase and further the demand as it increases, the number of mitochondria will increase. First, initially size of the mitochondria will increase. Next, the number of mitochondria will increase to cope up the demand. That means you want more ATP. And finally, it is supplying the ATP in the form of what you can say, uh, citric acid cycle. And one more thing is there. You can see that it stimulates the lipolysis. So when lipolysis is there, the product is fatty acid and glycerol. And that fatty acid will run through one cycle. I think you already studied in lipid metabolism, beta oxidation of fatty acid. So this fatty acid will undergo beta oxidation and it will provide some ATP. Nearly 100 plus ATP will be provided by the breakdown of fatty acid. So ultimately, so whether it is citric acid cycle or beta oxidation of fatty acid, it is providing continuously for the, what you can say continuously, the ATP. Why? Because sodium potassium ATP is requires ATP. That's it. Then you come back here. This is a somewhat complicated point. Just now I told that you require acetyl-CoA, glucose in the form of acetyl-CoA. Glucose will break down into acetyl-CoA in glycolysis. That means more glucose molecules are required. More glucose molecules are required means more amount of glucose should be present in the blood. Then only it can enter into the cell. More glucose is, the if you are expecting more glucose should be present in the blood, that means more glucose should be absorbed from the intestine. I repeat again, 
So if you want more ATP, you require more glucose in the form of acetylcholine. You want more glucose, then definitely more glucose should be present in the blood. Then only the glucose can enter inside the cell. If you are expecting more glucose inside the blood, then definitely you, your blood, what you can say, your intestine should move that glucose from the intestine. That means your intestine should transfer the glucose from the intestine to blood. That means absorption should be improved. Which absorption? Glucose absorption should be improved. So that means thyroid hormone, thyroid, which one? Three, T3 and T4. It also increases the absorption of glucose from the intestine. Then if you are expecting too much amount of absorption, then definitely you require enzymes for to promote the absorption like uh, digestive enzymes. So automatically all the enzymes for digestion will be increased by the thyroid hormone. Just if it increases the digest, uh, enzymes concerned with the digestion, no use. You have to consume really good food. And if you want to consume good food, rich amount of food, first of all, you should feel hungry or appetite should be improved. So thyroid hormone is also concerned with the hunger and as well as appetite. I think you understand the link here. Everything started with here, ATP. Then once ATP is required, then automatically Increased oxygen is required, increased glucose is required in the form of acetylcholine, increased water is required. We are talking about increased glucose. If you want increased glucose, means increased absorption of glucose should be there from the intestine. If we are expecting increased absorption, all the enzymes concerned with the digestion should be increased. That also will be done by the thyroid hormone. And just improve the digestion is of no use, digestive enzyme no use. And you require really good amount of food. If you want to consume the diet, good rich food, then you should feel hungry. So thyroid hormone, it will increase the appetite also. This is the one particular method by which the glucose is improved. Apart from that, one more method is there. It also promotes the glyco, which one T3, T4 also promotes the breakdown of glycogen and as well as uh, glycogenolysis, that is the breakdown of glycogen to glucose. So when glycogen broken down into glucose, the product is, which one? Glucose only. That glucose will enter into the blood circulation. So this is by which this is the one particular method by which the glucose concentration in the blood will be improved. And next one, gluconeogenesis. This is the synthesis of glucose from non-carbohydrate sources during the prolonged starvation. So this T3, T4, it will promote the, it will promote the formation of glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. So finally, it is trying to add up the glucose into the blood circulation. So it's over. Then it, you require more water. That means more water when you will consume. You have to feel thirsty then it is understood that this hormone will increase the thirst. You will drink more water. Then you require more oxygen. So if you want more oxygen, means obviously the rate of respiration should be increased. So thyroid hormone, it will increase the rate of respiration. Just if, because thereby more amount of oxygen you can deliver to different parts of the body. And just if you want to deliver more amount of oxygen, uh, no, it, it, the rate of respiration should be increased. Obviously the thyroid hormone, it will increase the rate of respiration. And just rate of respiration is increased, no use. You because the RBC is supposed to hemoglobin and RBC is supposed to carry this oxygen. So obviously uh, RBC should be improved. So thyroid hormone, it will stimulate the production of RBC. If you remember in the second chapter, blood chapter, what we discussed in the beginning of the academic year, in the erythropoiesis, uh, it is the factors necessary for erythropoiesis. We discussed under three heading: general factors, maturation factors, and factors necessary for hemoglobin. Under general factors, so erythropoietin is required. After erythropoietin, we discussed about thyroid gland or thyroid hormone is required for the production of which one RBC. So this is how it because thyroid hormone it wants more ATP. That's why it will promote the production of RBC. Not just because it loves the RBC, it is not improving the production of RBC because the necessity is ATP. So ATP is required means oxygen is required. Oxygen is required means RBC is required. RBC is required means obviously it has to increase the production of RBC. So that's why it will promote. That means T3, T4 will promote the production of RBC. Then finally, if the rate of respiration is increased, it is of no use. Why? Because according to that, the heart rate should increase, cardiac output should increase, and as well as the blood vessel, vasodilation should be there. That means dilatation of blood vessel will be there because more amount of the blood should be pumped by the heart. Vasodilation should be there. So all these three will be promoted by the thyroid hormone. Increases the heart rate, increases the cardiac output, promotes the vasodilation. So thereby, so more amount of the blood will reach to different parts of the body. So now I think you understand the concept of thyroid hormone. That means 
just for its purpose that means just for this particular point they will understand so it it will support each and every requirement in the body and thereby this purpose is served which one production of atp more amount of atp is produced then it is understood that more atp is produced means more calories will be calorigenic more heat will be produced and then you can burn the fat very easily so this is about the which one uh, sequence of events which will take which is the promoted by the uh, one t3 and t4 now about the growth so if you just check the growth it will promote the growth of uh, it will promote this physical growth and as well as mental growth so physical growth means you require protein it will promote the synthesis of the protein which one uh, t3 t4 along with the growth hormone and the mental growth and definitely the mental growth is promoted by the uh, t3 t4 because mental growth point of view growth hormone doesn't have any role to play in the mental growth only uh, thyroid hormone will play a significant role in the growth and most of the time we'll think that uh, growth means height etc etc yeah agreed but partially so you have to understand one particular point consider you are the product of hyperthyroidism patient that means consider parents are hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism it doesn't mean that you will that means increased amount of which one thyroid it doesn't mean will become taller so taller is concerned with the growth hormone so but the thing is if you are hyperthyroidism patient product definitely will be short and consider if you are a hypothyroidism patient product then also you are short that means whether increased amount of thyroid hormone is there whether it is decreased amount of thyroid hormone is there you will be dwarf you will be very short why it happens like that for example let us discuss about the increased level of thyroid hormone when increased level of thyroid hormone is there your growth will be very fast abnormal fast will be there initially in the childhood and suddenly it will stop that means the growth will become very fast and suddenly it will stop and further growth will not be there but as in case of a normal child the growth will be slow but steady it will be continued up to 21 years but the thing is the person who is suffering from hyperthyroidism stresses are there then obviously you will be dwarf only your progress will be very fast initially but the thing is the further progress will not be there it will be halted this is about the growth uh, physical growth and mental growth Uh, this is like a little tricky because explanation i cannot give uh, in through this particular video because um, you require some examples that examples i cannot discuss right now here for example if you take hyperthyroidism patient hyperthyroidism patient always they will be very active anxious you heard about anxiety so they will be always they 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 look like they are very anxious or anxiety will be there they are restless and they will get very less sleep and they feel more hungry whether and interestingly if you think that hyperthyroidism means you will become bulky it's not true you will not be bulky then you will be surprised that how come they are not bulky why because they consume more food why they are not bulky observe carefully this point increases the enzyme for a digestion no doubt your food is digested why because enzymes are improved but you have to understand one more point digestion means it is mechanical and as well as chemical mechanical means motility of the intestine chemical means enzymes it not only increases the chemical that is enzymes for digestion it also increases the motility of the intestine that means when intestine become more motile the food can stay very short period of time in the duodenum because the intestine or duodenum is highly motile so from the duodenum very fast the food will be transferred from duodenum to jejunum so thereby the food cannot be digested properly that means undigested food material will be there then you just go through the definition point of view the food which cannot be digested and which cannot be absorbed it will be eliminated from the body so hyperthyroidism patient so for example excessive hyperthyroidism is there even though the enzymes are rich in uh, digestive enzymes are rich because the motility of the intestine is more then rapidly the food will be moved from the duodenum to other jejunum and as well as ileum so thereby they constantly they suffer from diarrhea so whatever the food they consume everything will get eliminated out then what about the hypothyroidism hypothyroidism means the motility will be less enzymes also will be less then food what they consume it will be digested very 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 slowly so more very slow digestion means automatically what will happen utilization of the nutrients will be more then they will become bulky so all the hypothyroidism patients they look a little bit bulky and hyperthyroidism patient they will become very lean and as well as short
both hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism that means increased secretion of thyroid or decreased secretion of thyroid both are short and both are really complicated procedure so the thing is so this is about the growth that means it looks like simple point but the thing is if you go deeper then automatically you can understand so much meaning is there this also for example you take this point stimulates the receptor for the ldl in liver it looks a very simple point but if you carefully if you try to understand it will have a different meaning here for example it stimulates the receptors in the liver for the ldl that means what all the ldl which is present in the blood will come and bind to receptor they will undergo metabolism cholesterol will be left and you know that cholesterol is a very important component because it requires for cell membrane and it is required for the synthesis of steroid hormones it's extremely important that means the cholesterol can be utilized so for example consider uh, what you can say hyperthyroidism is there that means more number of receptors will be present in the liver literally speaking the ldl concentration in the blood will be very low okay the person will be look like a skeleton and consider if your the person is the patient is hypothyroidism patient that means the receptors will be less in the liver and once the receptors are less in the liver and ldl will stay inside the blood it cannot move into the liver because there is no use in moving to the liver because receptors are not available or very, very less in number so automatically the concentration of ldl will be more generally people will complain sir i never consume any fat i consume very very small, small quantity of food but still i am becoming bulky and my fat content or lipid profile or ldl cholesterol is very high the meaning is very simple because your liver doesn't contain the receptors for the ldl so that means your fat will be present in the blood ldl will be present in the blood so the person who is suffering from hypothyroidism then it is understood that the, if you check their blood the fat content that means the lipid profile will be very high in the patient who is suffering from hypothyroidism even if they say that they don't consume the fat or lipid but still their fat content in the blood will be very high so the mean the reason is very simple because the receptors are not there in the liver the next one <coughs> lipolysis fatty acid and then this fatty acid will undergo beta oxidation and produce the atp the question is simple like if you are a hyperthyroidism patient then automatically more fatty acid will be produced and more atp will be produced the point is whether this atp or fatty acid whether it can be managed by the liver or not it can be managed or it cannot be managed if it is managed very good if it cannot manage for example liver cannot manage it then it understood that the person will suffer from fatty liver it is called as non alcoholic induced fatty liver that means without the consumption of the alcohol also some people will suffer from the fatty liver so this condition you can see in the hypothyroidism patient so this is about the breakdown apart from that this growth this thyroid hormone is having other functions also for example it it promotes the mineralization of the demineralization of the bones try to understand the concept carefully it promotes the demineralization of the bone i think you heard about bone and bone is like its composition is it contains mineral ash water etc etc and it will construct one bone usually we think that the bone is a permanent structure the nutrient the contents which are present in the bone will not come out but actually it is not true constantly the ions which are which are present inside the bone it will move out of the bone into the blood circulation that means calcium potassium magnesium etc etc it will move out of the bone and enters into the blood circulation so constantly that means old ions will be removed and fresh ions will be added to the bone so thereby the bone will be strengthened so this one for example uh, which one thyroid hormone what it will do constantly it will remove the ions from the bone and it will add the contents into the blood circulation when i say that thyroid hormone is removing this particular content from the bone definitely some other hormone will be there it will add the content inside the bone are you able to understand thyroid hormone it will move the ions from the bone to outside into the blood circulation whereas some other hormone will be there which will add the content into the bone that hormone is nothing but a calcitonin so you already discussed that in the beginning that two types of hormones are produced by the thyroid gland one is t3 t4 and second one is calcitriol t3 t4 is produced by the follicular cells and calcitonin is produced by the para follicular cells or c cells so both are present in the thyroid gland but both are having different action opposite action is there so that is about the bone demineralization the next one 
Mm, yeah. Uh, this thyroid hormone it is also very important in the adding the fat content to the breast milk. Uh, uh, what you can say after pregnancy, uh, lactating mother, the fat content in the milk and as well as the for the contraction of the mammary glands, uh, definitely this thyroid hormone is extremely important. Actually, it 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 just it is concerned with the composition of the milk. To be specific, it is very much concerned with the composition of the milk. How much amount of fat? How much amount of uh, protein, how much amount of calcium, etc., etc. So all these things will be concerned with the thyroid hormone. So this is about the functions. So next regulation, you just observe when there is a uh, decreased blood level of T3, T4 is there, or low metabolic rate is there, then automatically hypothalamus, what it will do, it will it will release the one particular hormone called as thyrotropin releasing hormone (TRH), and this TRH will go to the anterior pituitary. And then anterior pituitary, it will stimulate one hormone called as thyroid stimulating hormone. Once thyroid stimulating hormone is released, this thyroid stimulating hormone, it will go and bind to thyroid cells, thyroid gland or follicular cells of thyroid gland and it will stimulate the release of production release of T3 and T4. So the T3 and T4 will be released into the blood circulation. Once it is released into the blood circulation, it will go, it will produce some action. Then if the content of T3, T4 becomes very high, then what it will do? It will inhibit the TSH. That means T3, T4 itself will inhibit the TSH. It will inhibit the TRH also. That is called as product-based inhibition or feedback inhibition. That means where the product itself is inhibiting the substrate. Consider T3, T4 levels are very low. That means automatically the hypothalamus can identify low levels of T3, T4. And once T3, T4 is very less, metabolic rate, metabolic rate also will become very less. And then the hypothalamus will release the TRH. This is how the thyroid hormone will be uh, regulated. Then you can, if you have any doubts, you can unmute and you can ask the questions now. Sir? Yes. Sir, Tell me. Uh, do, do hypothyroidism patient have uh, more chances of getting heart attack? It's not like heart attack. Not like that, madam. You just try to understand. 100% what you told is 100% possibility is there. Why? Because when hypothyroidism is there, cardiac output will be low. And as well as you just go through this slide, you can understand. You see that normal thyroid, heart rate will be more increased, cardiac output will be more, and vasodilation will be there. When low levels of thyroid hormone is there, Heart rate will become less, cardiac output will become less, and as well as vasoconstriction will be there. Whether they will suffer from heart attack or not, one, one particular symptom I can tell you. You heard about varicose of veins. You heard about veins will get constricted in the legs. Have you, have you, have you heard about it? Uh, varicose of veins is there. Then pain is there in the legs. Then they have very good chance of getting uh, this heart rate problem. No doubt about it. Yes, what you asked is correct. They have more chances of uh, which one? related and if you ask me that uh, hyperthyroidism that means increased heart rate increased the cardiac output whether they have the chances of heart problem definitely they also have the chances they have a different chance it is called an arrhythmia what about cardiac arrhythmia that means abnormal beating correct or not so a rhythm will not be there serious cardiac arrhythmia will be there so this is the issue definitely chances are there no doubt about it any other questions you can ask Sir, does thyroid gland have any role in this uh, dwarfism or gigantism? Pardon? In gigantism, Sir, no, madam. It is totally concerned with the growth hormone. Dwarfism and gigantism is extremely, that means totally concerned with uh, growth hormone. The complications of the thyroid hormone is entirely different. Acromegaly, cretinism. So they are dwarf only, but the, not the thing is, it is not like dwarf concerned with the growth hormone. It is something different. So that abnormality till now we have not discussed. That is different. This one, this abnormality is something, cretinism, acromegaly, something different. It is not concerned with the growth hormone. Growth hormone is entirely different. Of course, it looks that both are concerned with the development of the body, growth of the body. This is more significant. Actually, this will impart more significant problems when compared to growth hormone. Any other questions, please? 
you can ask questions, please. Any questions? Anything is there? Questions, please. Any other questions? Shall I wind up? Yes, sir. Okay.